<laughs> What's no, wait, good, wait, y'all? Hold up. Let Welcome Clay bring back it in. Clay to never a... brings it in. I ain't fucking go off, King. I, I, I didn't agree to this. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, y'all. Welcome back <laughs> to another <laughs> episode <laughs> you can't do of that. the Self Made Monsters <laughs> podcast. I am, I don't know, your C Mike with the most. <laughs> I go you don't by know, the name I don't of know. Invincible <laughs> to my internet below. Because we in Discord, uh, we have the homie Stormblessed, followed Yo. by Clay Miser. Okay. And then we have Big Black Noir. We Brought are to you the by the 2004 PT Chrysler Cruiser. Chrysler. The best Fuck car it ain't. that <laughs> your pay us. grandpa really, really liked. Them niggas ain't pay us. Anyway, we are the <laughs> Self Made Monsters. Gentlemen, how are y'all doing today? Well, I'm doing really good, especially considering I finally figured out the um the um uh, the idea of oh my god, I shouldn't have been eating and talking at the same time. I'm trying to eat old ass pita bread from like six hours ago that's just been like Oh outside. from the from the sound of you fucking it up, it sounded like it was a magical meal. <laughs> <laughs> like it's changing your life Dabble right now. I can't chew it morsels. fast enough. I'm, That's I, what she said. Hold up, somebody else start this up. I can't. Why would she be chewing it's, it? Why is the bread chewing? I know a couple eaters. I don't know about you. It's not chewing. It's just like eaters. super stale, and it's like rock. But I low key kind of like that. So okay. I'm very right. happy considering that I figured out, Wait although I've been figured it out, but I, I really now understand why people like cars. Because now, like, you, got, you guys have to understand that for the longest time, I didn't even know what a fucking sedan was until like a couple months ago, right? I, I'm, I'm like car stupid. I do not understand them. Like, I think they were a mistake. I genuinely think cars Hello. were a mistake. Uh, people weren't ready for them. And we have society have suffered for it. But. You said my nigga trying to still be a horse and carriage. <laughs> yes. No. We should have stayed with bicycles. <laughs> we should have stayed with bicycles. I, I think that cities should be more compact. I... Where you can walk and uh, walk to everything from and run to everything. But uh, but enough about my future landscape. You live in Chicago. To How the fuck I know, do you. I know. <laughs> How do you feel that way, bro? You can't I don't have time to get into it. Do you but just know, know cars shouldn't exist. We should just have streets. trains. We should just have trains uh, to to transport like people in like big shit and some kind of like machine to like get like the big shit out into the city. And it may take longer for construction, but damn it, so be it. It'll be better for the environment. Long story short, I understand why people like cars, right? And that he, he's trying to, review, to reinvent trolleys right now. <laughs> Yeah, that is like, doing shut up. That is doing part like, to review from this <laughs> wonderful YouTube channel called Regular Cars for the 2004, 2004 PT Chrysler Cruiser. Chrysler that PT Cruiser. for for the 15 minutes that this video is on, it effortlessly breaks down the divide of of baby boomers and millennials and Generation Xers and understanding the idea of postmodernism versus modernism. Right. My uncle had a pre had a PT Cruiser. God bless the dead. He has some, some fake spinners on that bitch. Shout out to him. I should have exposed him like that. I should have exposed him like that. Did he do the hubcap yeah. trick? Did he do the hubcap trick? <laughs> hey, but when he got out, them bitches were still spinning though. So his mission was accomplished. I mean, <laughs> you're right, but people know. <laughs> Only if you got close. They, they weren't cheap. Okay, so... <coughs> I didn't know what a 2004 Chrysler 2004 PT Cruiser was Chrysler until I saw PT this video. You still right? shouldn't know, honestly. <laughs> so you see, every time I bring up that car, so I've talked to like 20 people, 20 people about this, about this one thing, right? And like literally half down the line, you are literally being the number uh, number 10 person for like the other side. I either hear people say like, oh yeah, this was like the best fucking car ever. Or I hear people say, nah, this car was like shit. It's either one thing or the other. And I'm like, whoa, because this is exactly what the video was basically talking about. A and PT how Cruiser, the, what? Let me Google this. The 2004, 2004 Chrysler PT Cruiser. Chrysler. Right? Okay. PT 
and sorry. how that this car is the exactly perfect what my uncle had the perfect <laughs> mixture of like postmodernism and modernism continually fighting against each other. So so everybody here everybody here has already gone through their AP classes. You guys know what postmodern postmodernism and modernism is, right? For the sake know, of argument, let's shit, say man. yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For the sake of the argument, let's say yeah. All right, I'm going to be dropping some AP knowledge on your asses. So get your fucking pens and papers out, all right? So I don't even know what AP. I got Microsoft Paint <laughs> open. I, I took AP history. I don't know what, what this be about. <laughs> Yeah, I don't ah. know how to, exactly. Me too. I don't know how this correlates. How this correlates. Wait, okay. pre modern because God put it there. And, wow. Uh, <laughs> <I'm just> <laughs> pre modern because there. God put it there, and that's the way it's always been. Modern, onwards and upwards with inevitable progress. Post modern, niggas crip walking on their keyboard. <laughs> that's it. That is the picture that I have got on my first Google search. I will link it in the chat. <laughs> Whoa, fool. Okay. I, uh, okay. All right. Jesus Christ. Jesus yeah, it's Christ. it's a dot, and then it's an arrow, and then it's chicken scratch. I, That's brown. You know what? That's a no. damn good description of no. <laughs> yeah, yes, but you, you, no, I'm right. Yes, you know yeah. I'm right. <laughs> okay. Whatever the fuck we can do, we don't care how it correlates with the systems around it. We just gonna do it because we want so, to. So I'm gonna so, ice out my bezzy. But wait, diamonds uh, watches depreciate when you put all those stones. I'm gonna ice out my bezzy. All right, fuck it. <laughs> so postmodernism is the idea that. No media, no no written media, no art, no nothing. And I mean any media at all from from the uh, anything that you can derive information from, like the this uh, laptop, this microphone, this chair that you sit on, this fucking shirt that says whatever on it, that no art or media that you derive information of is more inherently more valuable or more important than anything that doesn't have uh, that doesn't have that same kind of value or media at all. period. Like, is it the idea that anything can be art, right? Okay. And why this is in confrontation with modernism? Because modernism is that uh, that art is truly made important through the uh, through progress of effort, right? And like you can look at like our modern like arch architecture to like understand that, like the Empire State Building like how it like builds upon itself until it reaches a certain point with the tippy top just being that one slant uh the you know the one slant all the way at the top like it shows the effort uh, all the way from the bottom all the way up to the top right is yeah. that art is derived from effort that how much effort you put in it that devalues that gives it its value oh like right? impaled down Nigga, what? i'm sorry yeah. that's, that was another one piece right <laughs> continue <laughs> And and postmodern is just everything beyond this. That it doesn't matter how much effort you put into it. That's not more important than anything else. It's all this one level of equality, basically, right? Once more, modernism. You only get the truth, and you only get to enlightenment, and you only get to value through work. But with postmodernism, you don't have to do that at all. Everything is beautiful how it is. But if everything's beautiful, then nothing's beautiful. And therein lies the snake eating its own tail. Postmodernists inevitably go round and round and round and round. So. And so what the 2004 PT 2004 Cruiser represents, Chrysler it represents PT this kind of car Chrysler. that harkens back to like a, to like a day where where they were the quote unquote good old days, right? That's why for the longest time the the 2004 Chrysler 2004 PT Cruiser, you gotta say the whole name, uh, was primarily like bought by like boomers and stuff because they they valued this kind of car that was like compact but like can hold a lot at the same time. So they took care and like gave it this upkeep for years and years for for the longest time. The the 2004 Chrysler 2000 PT Cruiser Chrysler. never really went out of style. <laughs> yeah. It was always favored <laughs> by people. <laughs> People who were like much older or by people who needed a car that was eventually passed down to them because they had fallen just on hard times. You know, the kind Jared and Mally, you know, your your uncle and aunt on like your father's side or something like that. Right. They've been going through a lot of trouble and then suddenly their car breaks down. You hate to see it happen. But suddenly grandma comes in saying, I need to get rid of this car and I'm going to sell it to you for five hundred dollars. And they say, fuck it. Yeah, we'll take the car. But you know how much upkeep it takes to handle a two thousand four 
for Chrysler PT Cruiser, especially from that time of year. We're talking about oil changes. We're talking about changing the brake suspension, all this and that. They can't really keep up with affording all that, but they're going to try their best anyway. Why? Because they're getting a more or less decent car in the 2004 Chrysler PT Cruiser, and it's not really going to fail on them unless they try to keep it together. I am getting triggered by him saying this whole fucking day. (laughs) And so... (laughs) <laughs> so it's an idea of like how this was like the model citizen of cars being upkept by a prior generation that valued that kind of effort only to be like done in by the wayside of kids who did not understand it or appreciate this kind of car because it just did not have anything that was even close to semblance of what they wanted out of a car and in a way it really isolates that struggle that we have now that you hear from every fucking pundit from Joe Rogan to Jordan Peterson about postmodernism versus modernism and that maybe uh, all the effort that you had put into your life it just doesn't fucking matter it just doesn't that everything is just circular and it's all just one big circle going around rhyming against rhyming and that culture is a snake eating itself or a borough style fuck you mom and dad all the effort that you put into your to your work and to, to your bang in order to get this fucking house and to raise me it all doesn't fucking matter because guess what the economy and society has collapsed as we know it and i just have to do with that as you will all of that represented in a 17 minute review of the 2004, 2004 Chrysler, Chrysler, PT Cruiser. Chrysler PT Cruiser. And you know what? In the midst of all of that, that existentialist dread, I get it. I, I fucking get it. I understand why people like cars. Like, uh, <laughs> like, like for the longest time, I didn't, I didn't get it. I really didn't. Like, like, I thought cars were a blight among society, right? 54 million car accidents each year. 1.5 million deaths. Look that up, right? The fuck is the point of them, right? Oh, it's drive long distances, ah, whatever, right? This gas goes, blah, blah, blah. But then I got it. The car is a tool, just like anything else, but the car is, 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 the, uh, is it's the mythology, like how we mythologize the fucking sword, right? It's an extension of yourself i know it sounds so insane to like think about it now and to hear that because it's like fucking duh but i i I just didn't get until now like i need i need i need niggas and bitches to know that i'm balling so yeah i got this i got this rolls royce even though i cannot afford the driver because you should not have it look unless you got a race you should not have a rolls royce unless you got a driver that shit is too fucking luxurious. <laughs> but it's more than just knowing that they're balling. Like, like you want Try you want people to know you you sensible and you're a family man. You get you something like a Nissan or a Honda. Oh, your tech savvy, you lean more towards Honda. You're more for the uh, aesthetic side. You go for the Nissan. It's it's all encompassing, man. Or you get a 2016 Nissan Leaf. 16. No, I don't even want to Google car, whatever the hell that is. You're an asshole. <laughs> Or if you want something to know that you're big and scary, you get a 2014 Ford F-150 SVT Raptor. F-150 SVT. Yeah, oh, no. I'm I've still... been watching a lot of reviews, so I know a lot. I of, see. A lot of you want people to know you make poor decisions and probably join the military, you get you a charger. <laughs> The 2014 Ford F-150 SVT Raptor is also good for when you go through one of those back alley small water towns. You know, the ones that look at you strange, not because you're black, but because you came the wrong way here, boy. And not because, again, of your racial skin, but more of you're an outsider. And we really, really want to fuck with you because we ain't got no time otherwise to do anything else. With a 2014 Ford F-150 SVT Raptor. You don't I have that fear anymore. You, you and these fool car names, my guy. Name. You have really fell down this rabbit hole, haven't you? Bro, like, right, have so. you ever thought about the 1965 Plymouth Valiant 200? I don't even know what that looks like, but probably. More, more in this moment. What about it? So the 1965 Plymouth Valiant 200, right? was made at a time when they were when Plymouth was still trying to like establish itself as like a premium car right in the 1965 Plymouth Valiant 200 which remind which I remind you came out with a 1961 all the way to 1965 Plymouth Valiant okay they they made this car that essentially is shit right a three-gear car 
right? That you can't go into the third shift because really it fucking sucks at that part. So you only have one and two. So it's really a two shift car. Okay. It only goes 70 miles per hour and it's supposed to be a budget car. I'm talking about this is a car that you see off the lot from the general that costs $500 and has like 80,000 miles on it. But you get that car. You know why? Because you want to know what an old school car feels like. You want to be a fucking man, right? You want to drive fucking stick. This is the car that you get just around when Hurricane Katrina's coming and that you have to sleep in for a while. This is your daily car that you get in day in, day out, but you learn something in the midst of it. You learn how to take care of a car. You learn preemptive measures about when to actually change your car and actually do shit for yourself. You want to learn how to be a fucking man and be a mechanic and drive your own shit? You get a 1965 Plymouth Valiant 200. Plymouth Valiant 200. Or it's so a solid. Told. I mean, looking at the car, it looks like a solid ass, like old school car to ride around in. I can see it. But you know what's not an, a solid car? A 1984 wait, wait. Oldsmobile Hearst Olds. 1984 Oldsmobile Hearst Olds. Wait, let me hold you right there. So, <laughs> of all these cars that I know you probably got listed, which yes. one would you say is the one that like fits you? Um, that would be ha have to be the 2021 uh, Tesla Model Y dual. A Tesla. Yep. Why a Tesla? Why? Why a Tesla Model Y dual motor? A 2021 Tesla Model Y dual motor? I'm gonna stop with the full name shit. <laughs> I've just Appreciate been you. I've just been learning a lot about cars. Um, uh, but that's because um, uh, it's that uh, that thing. That, that divide of like old and young thing again, where when you think of it, of the, so the Model Y, right, doesn't look like a fancy car. When yeah, it you looks see like it, an old school Pontiac. Right? Yeah. But when, once you, it, it's like, it's like this, like, it's like this story that comes into focus. Like when you see a Model Y, it looks like a Pontiac, right? It looks like some regular old car, basically. But when you get closer, you see, you see the logo right on, on the hood of it. Uh, a logo that I might add looks like an IUD that someone left on the front of your car, right? Uh, you see, you see that logo. Okay. And you uh. just go like, oh, oh, and you think to yourself immediately, what kind of person drives this car? Because what do you know about Tesla? That it's run by Elon Musk, and that it's the car of the future. It's the company of the future. You must think that this driver must have shitload of money, but yet. The 2021 Tesla Model Y dual mo I said I will stop doing that. Uh, is astonishingly that cheap for a car of the future. It's only about thirty-five to forty thousand dollars, which I think is a fair price for what you're getting out of this thing. A car that can go zero to sixty in what one point fifty-five seconds? I don't know, man. It seems like a fucking deal to me. Ah, uh, a humongous amount of space in the back, and I'm talking about some real fucking luxurious seats too. Luxuries, luxurious, luxurious. luxurious. There we go. That's what the Model Y brings, right? And you think all about this driver. How can he afford this meme car, right? How much money does he have to afford this meme car? And you have that kind of prestige about yourself, right? Technically speaking, if you're broken down to like gallons and stuff, it gets 135 miles off of one gallon. But, you know, equating itself to its charge, you get 355 miles off of one charge, which is, uh, I don't know, pretty fucking cool. Am I right? And it's just the shit that comes with it in terms of like the auto drive function, the the in terms of just like having a clear having a clear view for myself, uh, upgradable seats because you know I'm a short man and I kind of need that a little bit, you know, just putting it out there, and it's just overall the hmm how should I put this utilitarianism of it utilitarian mm. utilitarianism of it thank you. That overall, I just appreciate about the aesthetic of the car. So, yeah, it's just actually just a really good car for your money. And uh, when you see it, it looks like you flex it on people, but you're really not. And you know what? As someone who appreciates the story that goes behind what people think about certain shit, I kind of like that, that I'm in stealing that and some random nigga on the street. So, yeah. My car would be the 2021 Tesla Model Y dual motor. I said I stopped doing that. This is the last time. All right. I'll offer myself up for ridicule. I'm trying to choose between a Jeep Wrangler 
and a G Wagon. Wrangler? What Jeep Wrangler? What year? Uh, I don't know. I guess the newest one. And a G Wagon. So, car man, what do what does those two cars say? I feel like I, I don't know. I haven't looked at re- that. I haven't looked at reviews for those cars yet. No, oh, well, I'm sorry. Glad yeah. you've had some time to, to ruminate. What kind of car would you pick up to personify you? Is Clay still here? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. <laughs> okay. Dun 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 dun. All right, while he's processing, uh, I'd probably go with a Nissan Pathfinder. You looked into those yet? I have just a little bit. But uh, wait, why Nissan? Why? <laughs> 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 Take two. <laughs> Why well, Nissan Pathfinder? Um, it's big without being like um, overbearing. It nah, this comes is kind of heat. Exactly, it comes with a lot of modern amenities that will fit me. As I'm a bit of a family master, you have the space I need for that. Gives me options to expand. Gives me the leg room I need. You know, it, it, it gives that intimidation factor in a low key manner. Where it's like this. I is was a, just this, about to say this, this a this big. Looks- yeah, this <laughs> a big boy. But I don't got to throw my weight around. You, you see it for what it is. <laughs> Bro, I was just about to say, I'm looking at this car, and it looks like the kind of car that a family guy owns, that a family man owns. But low key, I'll it looks you like up. you're like, hey, <laughs> hey, if my son tells me that your son is bullying my son, I swear to God, I'm going to pull up. I'm gonna shoot your house, and, I'm, and I might have gonna, that thing on me. I might saying. pop the trunk on you. Now, what's in that trunk is for you to decide if you want to find out. It's one of those kind of cars, like. Okay. No, I'm, not, I, I'm a pe- it's it's a, it's, a, it's a car that screams. I'm a peaceful man that is capable of war, and you know I think that fits just a little. I'm a killer, but don't push, man. So, so, yeah, that, uh, yeah that, that, it's it's an intimidating kind of kind of car. Oh shit. God so damn. I'm a. I and don't want this too. color. Thirty-one grand, but uh, that's the G wag for this audio podcast. But yeah, I see it. But that shit is also like stupid expensive for no Except reason. Except when I'm editing the video, video audio podcast. So and, I'm uh, I'm more than likely gonna gonna stick with the Jeep. Mm-hmm. It's I don't just, know. I'm, I don't know, man. Are you are you doing some off off road bugging or something like that? Are you trying to no. find some treasure out in the Sahara Desert? <laughs> no. I like, just are we taking? Always... Are, are you like taking road trips with that? You need the space for the gang. Like, that's yeah. A are, lot are, we, of car. are we going to? Are we going to a certain I mean, island that has dinosaurs and we need to escape from a Tyrannosaurus Rex? I was just Wait, thinking, like, about let's go to the Grand the Canyon. Jeep? Both <laughs> the G wagon. Both. Honestly. Oh, nah. Yeah, both. Uh, I just have always wanted a Jeep, and the G wagon seems like the fancy, the like the the fancy ass jump from wanting a G wagon, from wanting a Jeep. Are you are you a carpenter? No, <laughs> I mean are, are not you, professionally. Are, are you a <laughs> anyway. plumber? Like this, I, this is what I'm getting from this kind of car. You're like you're like, hey, I'm a man that appreciates shit that can be done with his hands. And I can oh, only do that no. with a Jeep. Absolutely not. Oh, I will wow. call. I, <laughs> I will call. I don't, before I moved to where I'm at, I didn't even fucking put air in my old tires. <laughs> I would go to the shop on fucking uh, 82nd and Cottage. Ooh, boy, they hook you up for like $5. <laughs> this is not a sponsorship. Uh, as I, I mean, what I was saying earlier is I was also have been looking at for a long time like the wraith right now i'm the car i have now is fine it's a 2014 kia forte Mm. that is the the epitome of a sensible car (laughs) yeah by the way i was just looking up what kind of person owns a jeep and the first thing that came up was like eight reasons to uh date a jeep uh owner and uh, eight reasons to dump them and number 12 of, he may be quite handy. And I was like, yep, exactly. That's exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> That's exactly what I was talking about. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. I, where, I don't know where y'all would, where y'all go to just see a, I don't know how you got to this rabbit hole where you just saw a wide variety of makes and models of cars. But uh, 
so yeah as i was saying uh look i'm gonna i'm gonna put it i'm gonna put it in the chat uh look up you, this channel it is you, you gotta have beyond that, get out regular car reviews it's but it's fucking great if i had that rabbit hole mindset that Derek got <laughs> if i'm completely honest the another dream car of mine was only only because i love supernatural and impala old school impala ah or or a new impala but the the impalas are also getting discontinued this year like the 2020 is like the last yeah I've heard. impala i didn't like the way the new 2020 impala looks though but the fucking 1967 impala ss from which is the literally the supernatural car i would fuck with but i also plan on having a family so i i typically shy away from two-door cars see that would be a personal project that'd be the car you'd have in your garage work on or have someone work on and you drive for like special occasions so yeah because i've always suffice wanted to, get to a, say uh, i don't really fucking know <laughs> yeah i've always wanted to get an old school box chevy like a nine eight at best and just hook it up and just use it as my personal riding car. I'll, like if I ever get the, the Pathfinder, cool. That'll just be for the family. But the the old school box Chevy will be just when I want to just go cruising around. Mm. When I think about like old cars that I even th- like thought about, the only car I thought about before before this weekend was uh was uh the Toyota Corolla AE86, uh, because that's the car from like Initial D. And you know, deja vu. And that's all I really thought about. Just drifted. Before I realized that shit is hard. So Did y'all know that the new that. Range Rover comes like you can take the top off? What? What? Yeah, it's like a drop top Range Rover out now. Oh shit. You just fucked up changing the game out I here. ain't gonna I ain't gonna hold you. That shit was sexy. <laughs> changing the game out here. Oh shit. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, just my entire car career has been filled with so many issues. My only fucking criteria for it is if it worked. Damn, bro, that's like, sad. I, yeah, other than that, I really couldn't care less. I just want it to work. <laughs> I, no I can that respect speaks to that. Your, that speaks to your aesthetic soul. But he's probably like no. me and just don't <laughs> see a wide variety of cars I, on a regular. No. I, I'm not a I'm not a car person at all. My father is, but nah, I'm not what, what kind of car did he drive? Shit, I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, <laughs> I I categorize all vehicles into four categories: either a car, a truck, a bus, or a van. <laughs> That's kind of how I've always done it. No, no. Le- so, what would a limo be? Uh, that's a long car. That's a long car. <laughs> <laughs> all right, wait, 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 wait. So, what would a what would a what would a R what would a RV be? A bus. RV. That's a van. Oh. That's a van. <laughs> I like this. I like this a lot. No cap. I've always kind of, it's like, I've always it's like kind of how, like, you know, they categorize, like, uh, plants and animals and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. So, <laughs> yeah. But, like, uh, but, yeah, it's just uh, the, every every vehicle is, like, a subcategory of that. Hmm. Well, He's motorcycles don't count. But yeah, I've just I've kind of always been confused about that. Like I'll just be passively doing something else, probably as a passenger, and then just the other people in the car. Like, oh man, that's a 1999. So, so I just I don't I don't get how people classify that stuff. But then again, like I could tell you every fucking Pokemon just based off their sound. So these are all. I've Actually. also always loved Camaros, but that shit is just not effective living in the Midwest. After because learning of, stuff about Camaros, I agree with you. It's cool so it's car. too low to the ground for the shit for the yeah. amount of snow that we get. Mm-hmm. All fucked up. All your shit is fucked up. You're literally buying that car to have to buy another car. Like, <laughs> like legit, some cars are literally just secondary cars. They can't exist by themselves. I I'm I stay away from all that shit. I am a multitasker. I need this bitch to have multiple uses. Well, like, I better I better understand shit. why you would want a, a a Jeep now. Yeah. 
I, I understand that now. Because I don't fucking plan on having to move wood, but I might. <laughs> I have to. <laughs> no, you might I have to lay some. Want a family. Have, <laughs> no, no, no. If you're trying to lay some wood, a Jeep is perfect for that, too. That, yeah. too. <laughs> that also was in the article, by the way, about like dating a person who has a Jeep. I'm just putting it out there. They covered that everything. <clears throat> Even though... Ain't well, nothing like having a sedan and trying to play uh, acrobatics with somebody who ain't that flexible. Mm. Uh, mm. Yeah. Well, Damn. I'm fat and I'm against roadhead anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> I feel like that that shit has has killed more people than than than, than save. <laughs> like that's not the type of soul snatching I'm trying to partake in. Fuck that! I I am a a, a fan and a stand for roadhead. I like looking at I like looking at it on Pornhub. I can't. Ever you have do that longer. You have decently length arms, so that would work for you. Fair enough. I'm fat, got a belly, and got T Rex arms. It's all fucked up. I must say, yeah, you actually do have like a long reach. That must say, all you do is lower the seat, lay the seat back, lift the steering wheel up, and boom, all the room in the world. <laughs> Breaking down, breaking this shit down. But if this, y'all this, really this, adventurous, depending on her size, and I'm gonna let you move on. You could you could do more than road here. You can do road fucking, but that's another conversation. Which brings me to my next point, real quick. Uh, what's everybody's favorite Pokemon? Because I don't think we ever covered this. We, but we, I know did, we, sure we, we did. We did. <laughs> like, we did. And the, it turned into a I, thing. Yeah. Well, no. Uh, that might have been on the mini episode. Legendary. Oh, yeah. yeah. That might have also been on the mini episode where the audio got fucked up. Yeah. I mean, we we didn't say Pokemon. Yeah, we did legendaries. Got narrowed it down a bit. Yeah, like I remember us talking about legendaries, but not like our actual favorite Pokemon. Uh, I've always kind of had an affinity towards Lucario. Isn't that a legendary? Or is it just treated like a legendary? I think it's it's treated like a yeah. legendary. Yeah. Okay. About a show and shit. Yeah. Okay. It it had its own movie, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, that's why I don't want to count it. I'm like, how does how does you don't see Polyworld getting its own movie, huh? There's a love for Polyworld. Polyworld gets its own episode though, so. Yeah. I mean, he was just, wait no, shit. You, it's a trick I, question. I, I can't remember. I know, what you're, Pokemon, I know, I know what you're thinking of. And Rhyhorn yeah, you're right, is the first Pokemon. The what are you talking a about? lot of the Pokemon I like are actually as competitively. So that's why I've kind of said yeah. fuck competitively. This is true. Yeah. Like, I, like I'm a big Heracross fan. <laughs> like, I hear that and I go, man, Zangoose is that motherfucker, but he trash. <laughs> <laughs> he trash. Yeah. How your rival in the you in, in the in game universe is not even a type disadvantage or advantage. How are you rivaling this nigga? It's a viper? I, what? Wh- one, but my favorite it my oh my oh god. What's happening you know, to me? <laughs> my, favorite, there, buddy? <laughs> my favorite mon that I've always used competitively was actually Galvantula. Did you just say mon? Yeah. He did just say mon. He's a, he's a cool kid. He was one of those cool kids. You don't you see the whole Pokemon thing. Yeah, Garantula was my boy. That was a spider, right? Yeah, and I hate, I hate spiders, it. but that was my it. guy. That was that's like the only insect electric type. I can't. So it also uh softened the blow from fire. Hmm. Well, to piggyback off of that. Some of my favorite Pokemon also are trash competitively. Again, I never play competitively all that much, but uh, I think I already expressed how much I like Raticate on a previous episode because, you know, yeah. Hyper Fang, Super Fang, it's a big-ass rat, and I think rats are kind of cool. Fuck it. I'm going to say rats are cute. I don't care. I like yeah. I like rodents. All rodents, opossums, everything. Rodents are great. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> I just saw a video. Also, I'm pretty sure the Olives decided it. fucking wild. Bro, like there was a rat that was uh, at the job, right? Not like, not like actually inside of the <laughs> establishment, to get but the like place outside at the garbage. <laughs> and so I had like thrown food at it one time, right? And you know, I didn't think anything of it. Next day, I had to uh, throw the garbage out, and I broke. The same rat is there. I was like, oh, 
I threw more food at it. Day after that, three rats show up, and I'm like, oh. It's told his homies, thing now. <laughs> told his homies, all right, the lick is this nigga over here. <laughs> this hey, we bro, just chill they, here. They really were, they really were chill though. They like, they didn't run away immediately. They were just kind of walking up to me. I'm like, yes, yes, I finally have become the Rat King, just like that kid from Batman Beyond. What's yes, that? No, wasn't fear there me. a movie? That was a movie where a nigga had like an army of rats and would just just sick them on people. I think that's been like a movie and a novel like since forever, like. The idea of controlling rats as a power has has been around for a long time. Because when you but, think about uh, it, that's an amazing ass superpower to have. Yeah, it is. But yeah, I like rats. I like I like rodents in general. I think they're very cool. But you wanna know what rat scene fucked me up the most? Uh, Ratatouille. No, <laughs> what? No, I don't even think I watched. What do you that mean movie. that that man that 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 one rat re- uh, rehabilitated all of rat uh, image? Ratatouille. Um, I think it was a scene from Too Fast, Too Furious. When they what? were in the club and the the fat dude owed the Cubano nigga some money, he put a rat. He took it. He unbuttoned the shirt, took a put a rat in a in a bucket over the rat. Oh on my his god, stomach. that's where it's from. And he Bro, heated I, that bitch up, and the I, rat started biting his stomach to get out. Oh yeah. <laughs> Bro, I periodically think about that scene. And I was like, where is where where is this from? I always thought about that. I yeah. didn't know where it was from. That's from Too Fast Too Furious. Well, yeah. technically, it's a like an OG medieval torture thing. They used to do that shit to like traitors and make them talk. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Shit. Yeah, it's not See? great. <laughs> Rats are great for everything. So yeah, eradicate. But uh, my favorite Pokemon besides that is Poliwhirl, and. To off back of what Clay was saying, no, 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 Poliwhirl. I know what I said. Uh, Poliwhirl was also Red's first Pokemon in the manga for Pokemon Adventures. That's what. Okay, that's what I was yeah, thinking. That's I what Clay was talking about. Something. I knew, I knew exactly what you're talking about. I was like, I'm gonna get into it. Right. No, Poliwhirl was was uh was Red's first Pokemon back in Pokemon Adventures. So shout out to Poliwhirl. Thank you. Because I was literally like face falling after Storm <laughs> said, I was like, am I retarded? <laughs> 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 Up somewhere, what the fuck? Polly Rath actually kind of looks a little stink. Yes. Yeah. He looks a little stink. I think wasn't it like in the it's show just a bigger like Polyworld. No, yeah. it's the eyes, man. The <laughs> eyes, Polyworld. So Poly, so Polywag is just like, oh, you know, Polywag is just a tadpole. Polyworld just looks like an innocent kind of like creature. He's just like Polly Rath. Is, I'm angry. <laughs> he looks like he has Black Air Force One energy. That's what Polly Rath looks like. Black. I kind of like Polly Toad. I'm not gonna lie. Like you and your Polly Rath just walking down the street of like Celadon Road, a Celadon City or something like that, and it like crosses paths with another Pokemon, and out of nowhere it just it just snakes that other Pokemon. Yeah, you can imagine <laughs> that from a Polly Rath. What you doing in my hood, little nigga? Oh shit, my bad. Like, OG. It's just, like it, like a little Eevee is just walking by, and he's just Polly Rath is like. And you're just like, I'm sorry, I don't know why he does that. Keep why you have him out. He don't want to stay in the Pokeball. My bad. He's like, Polly Oh. Uh another one of my favorite Pokemons is Chimchar. Hmm. Like really the Chimchar line, but Chimchar, yeah. Chimchar is a solid pick. Um, first of all, oh, Chimchar okay. had an amazing character arc in the uh Diamond Apparel series with fucking Paul bitch ass. Um, but no, it's just always one of them. It's it's my favorite. Yeah, I think it's my favorite. Uh, fire starter, my favorite wow. fire fighting. I I like I like Monferno instead of Chimchar, and I like it more than Inferno Inferno Ape, Inferno Ape. But uh, yeah, eh, monkey. I like I like it because it's a monkey. Monkey's like it's cool. literally the Song Wukong Pokemon, Inferno Ape. You're not even wrong. My only problem oh, with Inferno fuck, was yeah, you're right. it, it wasn't Blaziken. It was trying to capture that same fierceness and it just didn't do it for me. I fucking hate Typhlosion. Yo, 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 you take I that back. Ty- Typhlosion, yeah. the motherfucker. Yeah. I was yeah, going to get a Typhlosion tattoo. Typhlosion like, looks what? fucking doofy. I don't care. Man. I'm not going to lie to you. He, he's kind of got a point, Storms. Typhlosion does look goofy, but Typhlosion does Wait, which, awesome. which, what do you mean by goofy? Are we talking like the animation no, from like Pokemon I Gold? Said, no, I said Or doofy. just in general. Oh, doofy. Damn. Oh, doofy. That motherfucker just look doofy. dumb. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, that he just a look fi- dumb. He's a fucking fire fairy. Like, what? <laughs> and Quilava did a better job of being a fire fairy. 
No, no, no. Mm. Cyndaquil looks great. Quillava. Cyndaquil looks look like you want to hug him and you know it's a bad idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cyndaquil is adorable. Yeah, yeah. Quillava looks like the one. Burn for it, but I'm gonna hug you though. Like if I was a real life trainer, I would give Quillava an Everstone just so he can walk with me when I go do shit. <laughs> Cause yeah. like Typhlosion right, is we... too big, but I love yeah. Typhlosion. Can we talk about? Uh, a Pokemon who you love the line, but the final evolution disappointed you. Ooh, I love Chikorita. I Ooh. love Bayleaf. I fucking hate, hate Meganium. I feel you on that. I feel <laughs> you. Mm. Uh, Meganium looks like a fucking mistake. Squirtle. <laughs> what? No, what? Squirtle in reverse. Because I like Blastoise, but I hate Wartortle and Squirtle. I yeah. don't care for them. Oh, Damn. To, okay. Wartortle is yeah, a as heat. Damn. Love what Blastoise brings to the table, but War Turtle is the ugliest. Blastoise is a fucking Digimon, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Digimon like hardcore. War Turtle does not even look bad. That you hate. Like what is it? Is it the ears that piss you off? Yeah, it's the ears. It's mainly. Right, the ears. Just say I, that. I agree with that. Yeah. Just yeah. say that. Yeah, it's the ears. It, it just doesn't <laughs> match with everything else. I'm like, why the fuck you like this? What's going on here? I don't like it. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why they went with that decision for the ears because he has no ears. Oh, it's Squirtle. Oh, easy. And then he has regular ears. as Blastoise. We've all said the wrong answer. What? It's Dragonite. I, I yeah, I was waiting for one. Of yeah, said. Dratini is said. pretty. Dragonair is a fucking elegant beauty of a dragon, and you get this fat fuck. <laughs> I humbly disagree because Dragonite, I love Dragonite. I actually hate the other forms of Dragonite. I Same. don't like Dratini. I don't, I don't like, like Dragonair, Dragonair But Dragonite, though? Dragonite's yeah. my nigga. Yeah. I'm not yeah. saying so Dragonite's bad, like, but if we're speaking just from like his evolutionary line, Dragonite should evolve from something else, not fucking Dragonair. Yeah. yeah okay. But a, be- a better version of Dragonair, which me and Brandon both love, is Milotic. That, I was just about to say that that's mm-hmm. what Dragonair should have evolved into, Milotic. That, that's exactly what it should have evolved into. Yeah, I feel like Melodic was uh, created to foil Gyarados. That makes sense. That, I, I, I which, yeah, that. Gyarados is my favorite yeah, of all time. Always will be. Is Feebaz, is Feebaz like actually worse than Magikarp? Uh, no. That's it. No, they're, oh. they're pretty equal. And just being ass. <laughs> <laughs> Probably <laughs> easier to level up a Feeb to get a, a Feebaz to Melodic than a Magikarp, but... Yeah, you just need a nigga to, be, to feel pretty. Yeah, you gotta just give him a bunch of them cubes. <laughs> or give him a prism stone. Oh, I didn't know that. No, nah, I, I I enjoyed that shit in uh, Gen 4 because you had to do the Pokemon pageants. Oh, yeah, that's By, right. For my evolutionary line that I hate, it'd have to be uh, Magnezone. Because, like, yeah. you know, originally, there was Magnemite, uh, and then he evolved. And it was like, oh, shit, there's three of them. <laughs> you know, you think it's kind of, like, lazy. Because, I mean, it is. But, like, I don't know. I just kind of like it. It's like, yo, when he evolved, they're going to add, like, ten more. And then it just became, like, one big, fat-ass, like, <laughs> microwave thing. It literally looks like, like what the fuck is that? a UFO. It looks, yeah. like a car, <laughs> it looks like a car from the Jetsons or some shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just, like, what is that? Oh, my God. I don't like Diglett. I don't like Diglett at all. Racist. Like the evolution. <laughs> what the? <laughs> <laughs> like how is just seen the meme to just that three he, and it's like that he's just this big swole buff dude under the ground. Under the ground, yeah. yeah I've seen it. <laughs> the digital. Oh no, my god. Three, y'all. Oh my god. But yeah, I think that's the evolution line in general. I don't like Diglett and whatever the fuck it involves into Dick Trio. Me and me and Clay <laughs> had a uh, had a Side Duck versus Gold Duck conversation the other day. I like Gold Duck. Don't care for Side Duck. Gold Duck looks cool, even though it just looks like a blue duck. A blue a blue duck. It just looks like a cap. It <laughs> <laughs> makes sense. Oh shit, that does not make sense. <laughs> <laughs> that's so stupid uh, uh, stupid as hell what do y'all think about what do you think about lick a tongue and licky 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 I, I think we I was ranting about how much I don't like him like two weeks ago on the discord <laughs> lick a tongue has never made sense to me ever since I saw him and then Licky Licky is like, 
There shouldn't even be an evolution for for Lickitung. Like, what the fuck is Licky Licky? It doesn't even look bigger than Lickitung. It just kind of looks like a Lickitung that's been out in the sun too long. See, like L- Lickitung. Got hell the no, wins. Licky Licky is five foot seven. Licky Licky, he got the width. <laughs> Licky Licky is taller than me. For oh yeah, Lickitung is like three oh, eleven. Yeah. Licky Licky is like five foot seven. Uh, I hate Pokemon that are my height. Or or, or or like their final evolution is like near me. Like we all know Charizard is like little as hell. He's like five foot seven. He has small band syndrome. But they so always angry. make him look dumb big in the show. But I guess yeah. it's just his ass is short. They got to add that whole he's, he's like a dragon. No, he ain't. No, he ain't. Actually, uh, Rhyper- uh, Rhyperior from, uh, you know, Rhydon and yeah. uh, Rhyhorn. I don't think that looks all right. I think they should have just stopped at Rhydon. Because Rhyhorn and Rhydon is a classic design I like. I love the look of Rhyhorn. And Rhydon is just just looks just looks like an evolution of like something that's standing on two legs from a Rhydon. But Rhyperia is just like uh you know it was it. a you know it was a good ass transition between evolutions? Onyx but, and Steelix. Yes. Yes, it was. I absolutely one hundred percent agree with that. Yes, it was. I remember Steelix is the first is the first Pokemon that ever ran my shit in Pokemon Sword. <laughs> Cause Damn. when you're in you the know? outer world, yeah, they, yeah. you see the, the you see the Pokemon. And that motherfucker saw me and on sight me on sight. That nigga ran up on me, bro, and beat my ass. Hey, where you going? I'm like, hold, hold up, hold up, hold up. Cause it's not really no level bounds in the in the outer world of short of sword and shield. I, I kind of like that. I had Look, like a level five. That nigga was like a level twenty five. I was like, oh fuck. All nah, right. that Steelix was level forty. I remember that Steelix. I, I distinctly <laughs> remember that Steelix. I'm oh like, my god, bro, why are you so big? Like, get away from me. Cause I was like, I'm just like venturing around, like, ooh, a Steelix. And I'm like, like remember when you see like the big ones out there? That means they're in the higher level. I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's not that high. Boom, level forty. Uh, my shit's like at level ten. So, yeah. and I tried to run away, and it was like, nope. Nope. Smack. Smack. Did you pay him money? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I feigned I fainted and I gave him twenty five Pokey dollars. <laughs> you dropped your wallet what as you ran away. What the fuck is Pokemon gonna do with money? They gonna eat that shit. They gonna think it's lettuce or something. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna eat my money. <laughs> and that's, that's in turn lettuce. gonna fuck up the the fucking. Uh, oh my god. You know what I mean. Oh my god, it's lettuce, bro. <laughs> I really like uh, Gliscor too. Glyscore? Yeah. Final evolution of Glygar. Oh, okay. I had like low key forgotten what that was. Eh, that's not bad. Eh, yeah, that's not that bad. Like a, a bat like chipmunk. <laughs> no, that's Coke Face. <laughs> oh, I also really love Scizor. Scizor is great. Yeah. Scizor is great from Scythar. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's actually a pretty good. That's a pretty good uh, evolution line. The the Togepi evolution line is uh is adorable. From uh, nah, what the Togepi toge- to Togetic to to Togekiss? Final Kiss? evolution looks. Like I don't know. I'm blimp. not a fan. <laughs> I'm not a fan of Togekiss. What? I love Togekiss. Like just like this. Like it hatched from an egg, and then like you you get to, you get a uh, Togekiss, which is just like got a tall ass neck and then you get the final evolution where it gets the width and everything that has like the actual wings now low key loses its yeah, arms for some reason the pop tart plane <laughs> the pop tart pop tart plane yeah basically it's a pop tart like mm-hmm. loses its loses its leg loses its arms and that evolves into the to the wings i like that toby kiss is actually i don't know if y'all cool. ever had a strawberry milkshake pop tart them shit's busting that just sound like diabetes in the cup what? They're, they're actually pretty it's a pop tart. It's what do you mean? I think the only pop tart I really fuck with now is uh the what is it the Sunday the the ice cream Sunday one. Hot fudge Sunday. Yeah. yeah. I can't nah. stand the 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 pop tart. We always get the the double fudge one, Ooh. the double chocolate fudge thing. Yeah, right. It just that's too much. Just has so many bad memories associated with it. I feel like I was abused during that time when I ate those pop tarts. I'm not after, sure. I think I've after it college, I'm kind of good on the cinnamon pop tarts. I like I the cinnamon, cinnamon and brown pop-tarts. sugar pop tarts, but you can't like you can't eat them like you eat the other ones. 
it gets yeah, it gets I at least like a weird taste in your mouth and just like in your stomach is the uh... Yeah, it's not it's not too good. It's not too good at all. Not too but good. But no, check S'mores Pop Tarts check out. though, check them out. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say check out the strawberry milkshake pop tarts, them shit's busting. And you can put them in the freezer. Oh, for real? Yeah. Y'all remember, All right. Uh, what? How are y'all? Do y'all toast y'all pop tarts, or y'all get y'all get them bitches straight out the pack? It depends I on am the mood. Straight out toast. the pack, nigga. It depends on toast. the mood. Eh, ain't no mood for me. It's toasting all the way. I'm a, I'm a straight out the pack. But main the main reason for that is because we didn't have a toaster in college. I mean, microwave works just fine, but like sometimes yeah, you just want it out the pack. Doing all that for pop tarts. It's thirty seconds. The fuck, <laughs> bro. I I don't think you understand how often I was late to, to class. <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna mention like uh, typically for me, pop tarts are just something you eat real quick. If I got time to toast it, I got time to just make that. <laughs> yeah, I got time to eat something real else if, I, if I'm a toast that shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nah, it doesn't taste right when it's straight out the when it's straight out the package though. It just tastes like something is missing. It's like a little Debbie treat if you eat it straight out the pack. No, no, wait, no. whoa, whoa, whoa! You what are you doing to your little Debbie? Yeah, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> wait, whoa, this thing whoa, about whoa. A, a new challenger has arrived. What you yes. doing to your Debbie snakes, nigga? Wait, what you mean? What, what you mean? mean? What you mean? What you mean? <laughs> what you mean? <laughs> like, like if you eat a zebra cake fresh out the pack, it tastes fine. Like, wh- what are we doing here? Oh, you think oh, I'm in, I, I'm not microwaving little Debbie cake? Oh, <laughs> oh that's what it sounded like. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, saying like you were doing some luxurious shit. <laughs> <laughs> like that I gotta make sure to preheat my oven to 350 degrees for premium yeah. for premium pleasure out of my little Debbie cake. Yeah, I thought so I had some cake. Your, nah. Make your own little Debbie cake. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, if you cook your Twinkies, you a different type of nigga. For real. You truly are built different. Dude, I think you're serious. <laughs> <laughs> Take a strawberry shortcake out. Right, hold on, let me put there, this in the oven real quick. Cooks their Twinkies, report them immediately. <laughs> crime that they will commit. <laughs> oh, make sure man. make my Twinkies are warm on the outside in the inside. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> the amount, all right, maybe I just need to get off Demon, twi- Demon Time Twitter. The amount of girls on my timeline that said... <laughs> That it posted to make me a Twinkie meme. Insane. Well, let's see. It's the st- yeah, it's the end of the month, so they're coming off their cycle and they're horny. Da, I wasn't da, talking da, about da, specifically da, now, da, but. Da. <laughs> wow. I'll stand by that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a special segment for that one. That's, that's, that's a different kind of comment. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> they out here horny. Hey, oh, my make you oh my god! Oh my god! Fuck! That made me forget what I was about to talk away. about. <laughs> Before, <laughs> relationship with you, so what you do? Twinkies. Ah oh, shit! I was gonna say something, something about. Uh, did you guys hear the story about the guy who broke into a bank so he could microwave a hot pocket? What? Okay, I'm gonna need some context. Yeah, I heard about that. Like there, like there was. I'm sure there was so much more shit that he passed up on the way to this bank. I'm sure there was so much more shit going on in his life that led him to this decision. I mean, you might be right about that, but that's not what the article talks about. It just says, man broke into a bank to heat up Hot Pocket. California man, back in May 27, 2020, breaks into a bank to heat up a Hot Pocket. And uh, that's it. I was today years old when I when I learned that they just keep microwaves in banks. Say his wife's boyfriend probably wouldn't let him use a microwave at home. Ooh. <laughs> I never thought These I would hear such a base ass. Little nigga. Oh, I never thought I would hear such a base ass uh, comment. Reddit has got it, OG. Oh shit! Reddit has invaded the t- uh, the podcast. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck was that? What? <laughs> Oh man, his wife's boyfriend. So yeah, he said, "Um, them my uh, fruit snacks, and you can't have none, bitch." Oh, when reporters shit. came onto the scene, I was being hauled away. Uh, they asked him, "Like, why'd you do it? Was it worth?" it? He's like, "Hell yeah, it was worth it." <laughs> he right. said, "Quote: Have y'all ever had a hot pocket before?" <laughs> All right. Surveillance cameras inside caught the perp entering a break room and using the microwave at 3:30 a.m. 
uh, when the alarm company told police. Cops eventually broke through the branch's front door and found the man after he had spent about an hour inside. Not stealing Damn. any money whatsoever. This man literally went in there for a hot pocket. He was homeless. Right. He was this homeless. Mo- First of all, it don't even take an hour to heat up a hot pocket. What the fuck was he doing? <laughs> he was just chilling. Maybe he cooked oh, it on low. No. Yeah, he he just he just really want the hot pocket, heat up the hot pocket. And for us, he was just kind of chilling. All right. No, for real it. though, he I, probably I know, just did I it for a hot in the cot. Let's just be real. I know that's a fat ass question, but I gotta know what flavor the hot pocket was. Unfortunately, they do not tell you the flavor of the hot pocket. We assume it was pizza flavor, but we do not know. It be, if, it, if it better have been pepperoni pizza flavor. Is there any other kind of pizza uh, flavor hot pocket I don't know about? What? They got Supreme. They got the spinach and sausage one. Oh, Wait, shit. Spinach and sausage. What the fuck? Where you shopping? <laughs> I ain't never seen that shit in my life. Whole Foods, my nigga. I was just about to say, is that a Whole Foods like <laughs> hot pocket or something? Because I'm like, that shit yeah, is like, insane. What? No, nah, when they came out with the breakfast hot pockets, they was they fucked the game up. <laughs> My, the motherfucking apple wood bacon and eggs. Yeah, he not wrong. Hot pockets, they they they, they got the egg They're white just, ones too. If you're trying to be healthy, I don't know why you eat yeah. a hot pocket, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know right. why we eat a hot pocket. <laughs> but like, I couldn't disagree more with like fucking uh, Jim Gaffigan, the comedian, when he talked about hot pockets are just like toilet pockets. <laughs> And I'm yeah. like, no, you're you're fucking you're fucking insane, man. Hot, Hot pockets, are great. pockets. <laughs> diarrhea pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Gaffigan was that motherfucker. Which brings me to my next thing, mm-hmm. comedians. I know I've been everywhere uh, this be episode weird. by just like t- by starting up with the cars and everything. But really, man, that that thing fucked me up for most of my, uh, my weekend. Just like looking at the uh, car reviews on this on this YouTube channel. It, it, it expanded my horizons. I understand more of humanity now. Like, for the longest time, I don't think I understood humans as much as I think I did. But by now understanding cars, I now understand people better. And that's really cool. But comedians. But comedians, though, right? So, like, who's your favorite comedian? Um, Active, between Dave uh, Chappelle and Cat Williams. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. Are we talking active or you mean just in general? Uh, one for active and one in general. Okay. Uh, I think I, I think Dave Chappelle is considered active now. Yeah, he's still he active. He's active. Yeah, he's so, active again. Yeah, Dave Chappelle and Cat Williams. I've been asking for a new Cat Williams special for at least three months now. Yeah, that nigga can stay. That nigga can stay gone. I don't <laughs> he, like he had his time. Um, hate the. I don't know. I want to say active would be Dave Chappelle as well. He's just more poignant. And in general, uh, hmm. somewhere between George Carlin. You know what? Fuck, I'll just go with George Carlin. That's my favorite, <laughs> but he did. Yeah, that's why he said I, uh, in general. No. I don't. I, I'm gonna just say it. I don't. I don't. I don't think George Carlin is all that funny. George Carlin walks so people like Dave Chappelle, Gambino, Eddie Murphy, all of the, like the greats couldn't fly. I mean, if you want to get technical about it, Lenny Bruce walks so that George Collin can run. Okay, then, Gambino is a mastermind. Fuck a bitch to pass the time. <laughs> <laughs> we're, I'm, we're breaking that down. Lenny I'm Bruce rapper Gambino. Is, uh, walked so, so George Collin could run. Because Lenny Bruce, back in the 50s, he was the only one that was really like saying all kinds of like curse words and saying, like, like what's up with all these Catholic priests fucking the kids? Like, he was saying that shit back in the 50s, right? So, I'll give credit where credit is due off of that, but I, I, I don't find George Carlin funny. I find him poignant. I find the things he says is incredibly smart, and they're just as telling as they were back in the day to they, as they are now. Mm-hmm. But as far as, like, making me laugh, I, I don't think, I don't, I, I don't. <laughs> it's just like, hmm, that was interesting. Ah, yes. Like, listening to a George Carlin special is like listening to a very passionate teacher that's it's fun to listen to but it's not funny to me i'll give you that yeah and i feel the same way about like bill hicks he's like another great american comedian like he always like railed against like the the establishment and he was like super anti-government like some of his best jokes was all about like 
there's no way that the JFK uh the JFK shot was like real and that Lee Har Harvey Oswald did it. And uh I find him super like enthralling to listen to, but just as like funny though, can't laugh. Um and so the comedians that I laugh at who are like active today, I know this is gonna sound like stupid and like super like uh super cookie cutter. But uh, John Mulaney. You know what? I mean, How'd I know John Mulaney would be your pick? <laughs> How'd I fucking know? I was going to say, if you say George Lopez, I don't know if we can be friends no more. <laughs> da, 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 da. Do, 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 do. Real quick, you though, before you get into your spiel about John Mulaney, because I, I, I just kind of knew that would be your pick. If it wasn't for Louis C.K.'s like, jerk-off shenanigans, it would have been him over Dave Chappelle. Go ahead. I was just about to say like uh, Louis C.K. Is, is like my favorite. Mm -hmm. Like that's not active. Well, before like yeah, before the jerk off shit, he would have been my favorite because he was just just so poignant and funny. Like yeah, he talked like he talked about all the shit that you always had thought about in your head, and you just and you like didn't have the courage to say. Bro, bro, I still I still think about to this day offhandedly with no like prompt whatsoever. Like man. This nigga really make the shit out of my coffee. Right? <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think about it all the time. Ooh, he has a, you never heard of, you never He heard got a joke. bit. No. Oh, man. I wonder if I can get that past the YouTube censors. If that anything, so cool. like we should just pull it up after this. Because one thing I love about one thing I love and hate about comedians, no matter who your favorite comedian is, you can never do the bit justice. Yeah. You can absolutely. never do it. This is this is very true. <laughs> But uh, John Mulaney is my favorite. Is my favorite. Uh, is my favorite comedian active. There's something poignant first about like just how he looks, which is like this stupid, lanky, wispy kind of kid, right? Mm -hmm. That that grew up in Chicago, right? He grew up in Chicago, and just like like he always wears this fucking suit and tie, and he's like meek as all hell. And around the time I found John Mulaney, I was also meek and kind of and a kind of and you know like super thin and stuff like that. And the way that he would talk about like this certain kind of like fear that he would have of other people mm -hmm. and like of like these different situations. I understood because that's what it comes from. Like uh, the, the, the specials new in town and the comeback mm -hmm. kid. Right. <laughs> that's where it comes from. This like fear of like other people and like and just like being scared a little bit. But then like just like going through it. And those one time when you're like out of nowhere because he used to talk about how he was a drunk. Like he used to like drink all the time. And when you look at him, you're like, how you didn't used to drink. He's like, but I did. And he talks about how he was like uh, at a party and he got blackout drunk at like his uh, teacher's house. And like he fucking like like somebody like like jumped on the fucking like pool table. Someone took a shit on the like the computer upstairs and then the cops came. And then John out of nowhere said, fuck the police. And they, all these like all these white kids in this up in this up suburban neighborhood just like fuck the police to this one cop and they, he was like wow okay somebody get the rest of, somebody get the officers and I'm like I felt that <laughs> like I like I understand that because I've only been to like a couple parties in my entire lifetime right you know obviously and they were kind of like that though like like I did at one point drink a lot like a lot i'm not saying i was a drunk or an alcoholic but i did drink a lot i liked the, i loved the way it felt it was fucking great right uh, just like dear old dad and it was just this amazing feeling like going to those parties like i understand that just like these parties and just like all these bunch of kids that normally don't be at parties but they're now here at this party and they're drinking and they're having fun and shit i'm like i get that and john mulaney he just he just he just hits it. Just his jokes are like, do they just fucking land? These punchlines are crisp as all hell, like crisp, and that nervous energy. Mm -hmm. I, I fucking love it. Fucking love it. Uh, but like, yeah, when we talk about like comedians, like overall, yeah, it may not be, uh, it may not be politically correct to say, but yeah, Louis C.K. I just, bro. I, there's no way that we just need to watch a special after we're done with this. Yeah, you can't really uh, describe his his comedy. But yeah. you know what? I have to sit on it. I don't, I'm, I'm conflicted because I still want to stick with Dave Chappelle. But I got to toss Bill Burr in the ring as well. 
Fuck. Yeah, I, I got. How do I think about I got to toss Bill Burr in the ring too because you know, I, I need to take Louis C.K. out. I, I know I just seen like a turn code, but yeah, I low key just forgot about Bill Burr. It's Bill Burr. It's Bill Burr. I remember watching his specials like as I go to sleep, like they were bedtime stories and shit. Mm-hmm. Bill Burr is like <laughs> because like is you can't even say like he's telling jokes. He's telling stories, and they're just funny to fucking hear. Like yeah, that's the only way to describe it because everything he goes through in his life. He has just his anger about, and the anger just comes from his in, the incredulity he has at what's going on, and he doesn't get how other people don't see it, and he uses his comedy as his way of finding catharsis to deal with it. That was the first time I experienced like a comedian like, uh, like kind of like challenging the crowd because he'll say something mm-hmm. and he's like, "Why the fuck did everybody get so quiet? Yeah, huh? <laughs> why is everybody quiet?" <laughs> he'll, he'll call out like their squeamishness and a lot of the times he'll put them in a position to where yo you're being hypocrites right now <laughs> like, uh, i think one of the first jokes i remember hearing is like way back in his like his first special why are you people like this mm-hmm. and he was talking about how this uh how he was at an airport and this and this woman was like scratching her back against the against like a pole to hold up the whole like to hold up the whole airport she's scratching her back like a bear or something he's like you know what maybe we do need like a super virus it's just gonna cold the week and i'm like and like the whole crowd got signed he's like why is everybody being quiet about this what what's wrong with you people and i'm just like yeah yeah what, was that the same one where he did the joke about traffic because he's like yeah we need to we need to call he it was another call of the week uh story but he was just like yeah we need to clear out all these people because this is just another motherfucker clogging up the i-9 yeah, yeah, it is. It is from it is from the same special. Oh my god, he, he 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 just. But yeah, I think it's a good contrast between like John Mulaney being my like active one and like overall being Bill Burr because John Mulaney is this nervous kind of energy and Bill Burr is like nervous, angry energy mm-hmm. because he's always trying to keep himself held back. Mm-hmm. He's like explaining to his wife like why he thought it was funny. Like when this other woman like tries to like here's some cupcakes. He's like. But he finds her annoying. Like, wouldn't it be so funny if I put her head in the cupcakes and, you know, I just let her choke for a little bit. And then, like, I feel the fear rise up in the back of her neck, but, like, just a little. And, like, it's so be funny if I, like, smash the cupcakes. And if wife is like, but I can't explain that to my wife. She think I'm fucking crazy or something. <laughs> and so I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get that. I think about that, too. Yeah. Like, you can't explain it, though. Um, Let me ask you, uh, what are your thoughts on Bo Burnham? I think for the same reason, I think older people liked uh, George Carlin, Br- uh, Lenny Bruce, uh, and uh, Richard Pryor and shit. I think Bo Burn represents that in terms of our generation for comedians. I truly think that. Because I was, ah, man, I was just talking about Bo Burnham the other day about like uh, how it's this like perfect evolution of this kid who did like videos in his room right Mm -hmm. like i remember like the first video like off of youtube like my whole family thinks i'm gay gay. yeah (laughs) (laughs) which evolved into like his first stand-up special like his old youtube channel is still available too which is crazy yeah (sighs) it's just this great evolution of seeing all that and then you see like everything from like bofo show from back in like 2008 to Bo Burnham to words, word, words, mm-hmm. and when he started to really break down mm-hmm. what it means to be like kind of famous and an artist, and then like what, and then what that was great. Make happy, oh my god, make happy was such a revelation. I still haven't Especially seen for, make happy all the way through, bro. My god, wow, oh, man. So, so like just going back to like, I think when it all really started to come together for Bo Burnham. Is like uh, words, words, words. When at the end of his like that song, like we think we know you, and it was like all these clips brought together, like oh, Bo, oh my gosh, like you changed, man, you changed, bro. And then like he's like, what the fuck has really changed about me? I haven't changed at all. What's only changed is that you no longer can like really like get to me anymore. And then like words, words, words was like when he was breaking down like how. The parasocial relationship actually works like you think that you know like going off the back of that like you think that you know me and everything because i'm your favorite artist but you don't mm-hmm. we don't have a relationship i will never meet you i i just exist up here to make you happy i'm just here to dance and and you know do shit for your uh amusement and then make happy further expands upon that because in that one 
and especially in the final like song like the big kanye west kind of like yeezus song he describes that uh i want to please you the one thing that i fear is you i want to give you the night you deserve but i want to give you something that i can't give myself which is to make myself happy and it's just like this I didn't know we were getting a Kanye reference, but I kind of felt like we were finna get a Kanye <laughs> reference. It always leads back to Kanye West. He's a motherfucking genius, motherfucking wordsmith, motherfucking like fucking Shakespeare out in this bitch. And and then finally, you know, the one that just came out, right? Bo Burnham Inside. Mm-hmm. Yes, that is what makes him George Carlin of our generation. When all said and done, and we're talking 50 years from now, uh, Bo, Bo Burnham will be put up there in that pantheon of like great comedians. And great entertainers because inside is just like i think the feeling of inside and I, I don't know if anybody else has this it's like when you're like right before like one of your big final exams is coming up in high school specifically high school when you think every day might be the end of the world and it's the big final exam and you fucking fail it and yet you feel released from all that pressure because now it's done it's like you're failing upwards that's what in- Bo Burnham inside feels like. Yeah. Facts. Yes. And Saki is based as all fuck. <laughs> Saki was spitting shit that Brandon be saying. It kind of scared me. <laughs> Speaking of Brandon, you haven't uh, given you haven't given us your comedian, or was it just George Carlin? Oh, when you yeah, when you said George Carlin, honestly, that's really all I can say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nobody, nobody, uh, was, nobody like Richard Pryor up in here? Oh, uh, yeah, I love Richard Pryor. I don't find Richard Pryor funny. Yeah, I've only heard snippets of him. I actually recently downloaded his entire body of work. It was actually after I just finished binging George Carlin. I was going to go through it and then try to solidify my opinion after that. I've always liked him, but I just never looked through everything he's had. Hmm. What were you about to say, Clay? Oh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't. I never really found it funny. I know a lot of people love him. I just I didn't get it. <laughs> what about Eddie Murphy? I, I, uh, yeah, okay. I, yeah. Raw is one of my favorite stand up. Yeah, I was just about to yeah, say Raw. That is great. along with Delirious. Yeah, Raw. This is the only two he did, isn't it? Uh, well, he, he two for two. Yeah. He missed. He, they, I actually they, don't they like. They are Delirious, hard though. to go back to though, because some of the jokes are just like. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, thinking about yo. Now, uh, you talking about the police siren joke? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's tough. That's tough in 2021. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the first time I actually like when I looked back at something. That's the first time I was like, hmm. I, I don't do that often. But when I heard that joke again, when I was looking at it on Netflix, I was like, oh, man, I haven't seen Raw in a while. And I was like, and I was like, oh, hmm. <laughs> it kind of sounds. I honestly think it holds up more. Is that what? <laughs> I honestly think it holds up more. <laughs> what you think about it? I don't know, Ba-do-ch. man. Moving on. Just <laughs> 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 keep moving. Try to get that Nissan buster ship, I see. I think the I think the him fighting at the club thing still pretty holds up and stuff that like that. That motherfucker said, "Yo, I heard Michael Jackson was looking for you." <laughs> oh, what Michael Jackson? <laughs> Wait, we don't know. We don't know what Michael was doing behind closed doors. Yeah, you might be a bad motherfucker. You don't know. <laughs> 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 huh. <laughs> uh, that, that one actually holds up. Because I, I still remember that one word for real. Like, like hey, man. <laughs> There's, uh, like, Eddie Murphy was great back in the day. But, like, I wish he did more stand-up specials. But, uh, yeah, all I remember is just Delirious and Raw. And I think Raw was, I think Raw was, like, much better than Delirious, though. Uh, Speaking of Eddie Murphy, I'll stand on the ledge. By myself. If you say Kevin I Hart, if fall. you Benches say Kevin Pluto Hart, I'm pushing good. you off. Wait, I was. Yes, Pluto Nash. You know, okay. Okay. Uh, you know, I changed subject. Or you I was gonna no. say one more thing. I was, I was gonna say, say I, I'm just the, saying I enjoyed Pluto pop. Nash. You kicked off the podcast. Yeah, you, you look like you uh, would enjoy Pluto Nash. <laughs> Damn. My mom Damn. bought that at GameStop for two dollars, and we never watched. It. Oh. <laughs> This man fucked up this, this whole movie. <laughs> Since fucked y'all up an entire fucking like studio. no, we talked about bad movies that we enjoy, and then y'all gave me shit for saying that. I said 
Pootie Tang, and y'all gave me shit for saying Pootie Tang was a bad Pootie movie. Tang ain't a bad so movie. I changed. Pootie Tang I changed my movie. answer. I changed my answer to Pluto Nash for bad movies that I like. Ah, okay, that one is in. That one's in. You fucked up, but I understand it. See, but see, that's a better answer. The problem is we we movie. can't give them too much shit because if we do kick off the movie watching thing, if we if we continue to watch bad movies, that's gonna be the one he pulls out to punish us. <laughs> <laughs> that's how he's gonna punish us. <laughs> I mean. I mean, if we're talking about like like apples to oranges, I mean Pluto Nash is leagues better than like fucking uh fucking any Neil Breen movie. So yeah, I would rather watch Pluto Nash <laughs> than a Neil, than a Neil Breen, Breen movie. movie. Uh, like we said, Neil Breen is great in like retrospect and in hindsight, and like once you watch it, you can like really understand. Wow, that was horrible. Like oh my god, wow, I've seen God now. That's that's yeah, the if we gonna watch bad room. movies, we should start with Twilight Breaking Dawn. That's a different kind of bad. So I'm gonna be that guy and say that I like the Twilight saga. No, Twilight is fine. I threw that whole piece of shit away when the entire fucking fight scene was a Genjutsu. They could suck my <laughs> spoilers, dude. Come on, man. Oh, fuck up. Yeah. Oh, shit. It is, it is kind of wild that a whole ass so movie. So motherfucking angry. Whole ass movie and a half is a dream. Yeah. I had, I had a yeah, friend and she, she loved the Twilight series. And by extension, the Fifty Shades of Grey series. She has issues. Anyway, and when that yeah. shit came out, she was fucking ecstatic and just couldn't get why I was just miserable. <laughs> Oh my god, that was so cool. I just wasted 45 minutes of my life. And I can never get that time back. <laughs> like, at never. all. Ain't no hand job at the end of this. Like, fuck. <laughs> Ain't no hand job at the end. Hold up. Who's out here getting hand jobs? What? Hand jobs are horrible. What, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? A good hand job? Like, better than I've like, never, I've never met a woman who actually gave a hand job good. The only good hand job is when they don't neglect the ball. If they do that, then I could just do this nah, job better nah. myself. <laughs> The only the only Man, good hand job is the it, one you, you do yourself. You're free there, to do is, other there, things. There, like it's like it's just like yeah. I went to work. You're not you're not ready. Like, <laughs> yeah, you like yeah. Blue, yeah. Like, you know. The, the women just don't understand. It's either it's either too soft or too hard, and they're like like this. I'm like, so you, you're trying to yank off my dick now, and I don't I don't really appreciate that. <laughs> but like, last, you, and all this is too soft, and they're just like 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 this, and I'm like. No, you can go a little bit harder, like this, and I'm like, I'm just gonna mm, leave that up to your. That's your capacity to teach. Oh, oh, oh! My capacity <laughs> no. to teach. I'm not teaching hand jobs. I can do it. You start, perfectly it, you, fine you, myself. It works its way up. It's a trickle down effect. How how are you gonna teach the octopus? Mm, nah. How are you gonna teach the octopus to a partner? Uh, so how, how are you going to teach the octopus? Wait, whoa, I'm what the fuck a, is the octopus? octopus? What the it's a wrestling fuck is... Yeah, like what? I don't, yeah, let, me get, let, me, AJ let me get a pen and paper. So, what is this? <laughs> yeah, so, right. Welcome one and all. Welcome class. Well, we to, said we to, was going to keep to, this to, under to, an to hour. Like this is supposed to be under an hour, so this, we have been a self-made monster podcast. <laughs> you know what? You know what? You're right. You know, you know what? You're right. I have promised that I wanted to keep this under an hour, and I'm going to keep that promise. Uh... Unless there anybody else, we got any closing statements? Because we closing up shop early tonight. Uh, no, just uh, Corey in the house being caught in the wrong house. That's about it. <laughs> but, oh, but I was gonna say on the comedian thing was I feel like after 2012, like it kind of just like died or wasn't as strong as it was. Well, that's because that's when sensitivity kicked in. <laughs> well, yeah, I know that. Hey, what yeah, are you yeah, talking about? Just, like, it's still comedians out there and putting out the hard I, stuff. I mean, yeah, the OGs, but like, though. before then, like, it, it was always a thing. Like, I, um, people were always I, talking about the latest stand-up. Yeah, people still yeah. do. It, it, honestly, this is one of those things where it's just, yeah, much. they are. It's just one of the things where you're out of the loop. <laughs> I, yeah, I I got, I'm going to have I'm gonna have to agree with Storm on that one. All I still hear about like what's going on with like the latest comedians and stuff. Like people still talking. Bill Burr shook so not Bill Burr. Bill Burr shook shook shit up, but um Bo Burnham, when he dropped inside, there was there was some heat from that. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. but he's an OG. Like Joe like even when Joe Rogan came out with the uh, special back in uh twenty twenty and uh twenty nine and twenty eighteen, that was actually pretty big. And I like he's Joe Rogan. I like Joe Rogan shit actually. Mm-hmm. He's saying that he's talking about not established 
comedians. What do you mean? Because the Laugh Factory, like still, y'all just said, Bo Burnham, he's an OG. Yeah, of course, la- his, okay, of course, okay. his shit is gonna get. Okay, like, the Laugh Factory is still a thing, and comedians still go there and perform. They're still putting out work. Yeah, that's what, and that's, that's where all the great. That's not even like put on, on the internet. All the, like, yeah, most of the do. Laugh Factory all, shit I've seen, I just had I saw it on Instagram. And I had to look it up. Like fucking DC Young Flowers at Laugh Factory. Yeah, but y'all so swung on a nigga because you know don't come up on stage and I'm on stage, bro. But but for the most <laughs> part, most comedians they still get they start out there and they work their way up to the internet and then they get out there. You just have to go looking for it. Comedians are still putting in work. Most look, I I'm like also one, willfully out the loop. Mm-hmm. Like most of my, a lot of the comedians I see are on Instagram now, and that's how I. That's horrible. Yeah, see it, them. it is horrible because Instagram is based on the algorithm, and on top of that, like some of the podcasts I watch, like Man School uh, 202, they have comedians on constantly who are out there promoting their shows, promoting their tours, and still putting out good work. And these aren't just you know, common grain comedians. You know, people out there who. Who's testing societal margins? Like it's still out there. You just have to go looking for it. We'll just agree. To it's not an agree yeah, to disagree. I don't know I, to I'm sorry, dog. So. You, you wrong. I I, I think what Clay what was look. trying to say Clay is that look. is that I think what he was trying to say, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that there's like comedians aren't like pushed to like the forefront anymore. Like we would see as much as we uh, as we saw back then. Cause like there used to be much more of like an event when like a big special was coming up or something like that. Yeah, like HBO. Yeah. Well, here's Showtime, the thing. Shit. I think, that's not I the think way the media works anymore. Comic View was still out. That's not the way the medium works anymore. Back then, when it com- the let's, let's take Eddie Murphy for example. The way the comedian's career career went was you do a bunch of shows, you get established, you get Jimmy Fallon, you get the Tonight Show, you get um what's the one that's terrible but has all the comedians on it. Can't think of the name. Conan? No, Conan is one of them, but that's not the one. It's a big conglomeration. What up? <laughs> oh, Saturday, yeah, Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live. You get to that point, and then either you eventually get a special HBO or Showtime, and then after that, you hopefully get moved to a TV show, and that's when you start your movie career. That was the comedian's path. Now, purists stuck to usually just doing stand-up. Nowadays, you can skip the television circuit. And mind you, how many of how are any of you watching Conan the Tonight Show checking up when comedians coming on now? I didn't watch this shit so when when it was t- <laughs> exactly. The time. But that's how you found I, out what people were putting out. If you're not watching that, you wouldn't know that they're being promoted. But comedians still go on to those shows because there are still a subset of people who get their information from that. And from there, yeah. you either expand into social media, YouTube, or eventually you get a Netflix, Amazon Prime. Or some uh, other personalized streaming service where your special gets put out on. And if you're not looking for those people and your algorithm isn't set to find those people, of course you're not going to see those people. But otherwise, they're still putting out work consistently. They're still putting out their type of work because despite what's going on, there's always an audience. and There's always an audience willing to pay for it. Well, yeah, but you can agree that it's just not like big as in forefront as it was back in the day. I think in 2012, you didn't have to look as hard. I feel like, but in 2012, everyone was watching TV still. Mm. And that, and yes. that's the point I'm making. We're in different times. The way you find the media is different. Yes. Yeah. I can agree on that. Yeah. But we have been the self-made monster podcast. We're closing up shop early tonight. We all have some shit to do later on tonight, I assume. And uh, we're going to get to it. (laughs) Like they said, yeah, they have shit later on to do tonight. And we all got to get to it. I've been one of your hosts, as always, Big Black Noir. Also brought to you by the 2004 Chrysler PT Cruiser. And the 1995 Toyota Paseo. Saw it coming and still disappointed. Yeah. And the 1993 Toyota Camry Wagon LE V6. I would say that's getting edited out unless they cut a check, but he's the one that edits this. <laughs> so. mm-hmm. <laughs> not, not if I edit and upload first. Yeah. Ooh, do I do I do I feel a race? I will stop editing the other episode right now. <laughs> just to do this just, one, just that's to fuck, fuck you over. What the fuck? That's fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, competition breeds innovation, so that means we're gonna be sprinting to get these shits out. <laughs> I'll, I swear to God, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I, if you're down for this, I'll do it. I'm like, okay, no fuck or this. Y'all can just die. <laughs>
<laughs> we, both, we both upload on the same day. Like, why double upload? Yeah. Whoever whoever gets the most likes is the one we'll keep up after the week. Wow. Start spamming it to people we know. Like, God damn it. This became a dick measuring just, contest. Oh, no. I was just talking to a, a, a buddy of mine. He uh, finally checked out the channel. He was a customer of mine, actually. And he finally checked out the channel. I was like, what? You actually checked out the channel? He was like, of course. Yeah. And I was like. I'm so honored. Thank you. And I was like, and then I had some like deep well of sadness inside of me. Cause I was like, I was like, Hey, sorry. I know I act differently on the podcast than I do it here and everything like that. I hope it's not a big shock. He was like, no, nah, no, nah, I fucking love it, bro. And I was like, Oh, he is. I thought you were going to say, no, nah, I like you better on that. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I was like, fuck. I'm like, I like you better on the podcast than, than you do here. And he was like, no, no, like, I like how real you are on there. Like, it's fine. It's like, you, like, you're funny as shit. And I'm like, I'm funny as shit? Bro, bro, I was hyped up all day. I'm not going to lie. After you left the shop, I, I, I said, I need to go use the bathroom. And I oh, was just, nah. I was just I jumping like in the. Going. Oh, yeah, that's not oh, okay. what the fuck? Oh, okay. What the fuck? I thought no. you was gonna do that octopus shit you was talking about. <laughs> he on some homelander shit. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> yeah, that is such a mood. Homelander jerking off on top of a building over the city. Uh, over the city. <laughs> that's a mood. That's Breath something I want to like do one day. Milk. Oh my god. Ah, titty milk. <laughs> gotta, gotta love it. Gotta love the, gotta love the mommy issues. Uh, but I will explain what the octopus is on a later episode. I've been your host, Big Black Noir. These have been my co-hosts, Clay. Uh, Hi, y'all. <laughs> Invincible. Yeah, I'll be safe. And the one and the only Storm Blessed. Y'all stay blessed. And uh, yeah, we've been self-made monsters. So far. Ooh, you okay there? You left arm tingling, boy? <laughs> Take <laughs> We've been the So Fame Monsters podcast, and you guys have a good one. Thanks in part to the 2004 PT Cruiser. No, it's not. <laughs>